Welcome to the Outreach Tutorial 2021. My name is Christian Peters and my colleague Victor van Pelt and I will provide a gentle introduction to Outreach in this video series. In this first video, I will focus on getting your Outreach setup ready. And after this video, you will be able to install Outreach in all necessary components to start your first project. So what is Outreach? O3 is an open source and online software package for implementing interactive experiments in the laboratory, online, the field, or any combination thereof. I will list three advantages of O3. One of the main advantages is that O3 is platform independent. This means that you can run an experiment using different participants, on different devices, on different locations. You are not bound to the laboratory or any specific device. Next to that, O3 is open source and there is a lot of source code in the library of standard applications and templates available which can be used by anyone. So for instance, if you want to conduct an experiment with the features a dictator game, you don't have to program the dictator game all by yourself. Instead, you can download the code from O3.org and adjust it to your specific needs. Finally, O3 builds some other programming languages such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Python. And this means that there are many advanced opportunities for you to program. However, don't worry, just as Python is a high-level language, O3 is a high-level framework, so you don't need to know all the nitty-gritty details of these languages to program. You can jump in and start building fun things right away after this video series. If you get more familiar with the other programming language, or are more familiar already, you can write things such as scripts to see whether a certain button is clicked or not by participants. While this is out of the scope of this video series, there are interesting blog posts on this on accountingexperiments.com. So given these advantages, do you always need to use O3? My answer to this question will be no. O3 is especially useful for interactive experiments and opportunities are ample. However, if you build a simple experiment or an experiment without interaction in which participants feature a certain scenario in which they have to make individual decisions, software with a point-and-click interface such as Qualtrics may be much more convenient. So why did we make these videos? Victor and I are both O3 enthusiasts and have used O3 extensively. Victor is an assistant professor at WHU in Germany and I as a PhD candidate at Tilburg University in the Netherlands. Both we use O3 to program experiments to tackle accounting questions. Despite that O3 has extensive documentation and discussion fora, which are really helpful and which I will touch upon later, Many colleagues asked us how to get started. Therefore, we started making a video series last year, for which we will put links into the description below. However, since this video series, O3 has made quite some recent changes, making some syntax very different. And although the old syntax, as covered in this video, still works, new learners of O3 are advised to learn a new syntax. So that's why we make these new uh, videos. This video will cover how to get your O3 setup ready. And in the second video you will learn how to program your first O3 applications. In the third video you will learn how to make these applications available to almost any group of participants using some different uh, programs. There are also some disclaimers to this video series. First and foremost, O3 is licensed under the MIT Open Source License, which means that you can use anything for free for non-commercial purposes, as long as you credit the original source. O3 has the added requirement of a citation of the initial paper of O3, Chen, Schonger and Wiggins 2016. We will provide a reference to this paper in the description below. Second, Victor and I are just enthusiastic users of O3 who want to help by creating this video series. We are in no way affiliated to O3. If you have specific questions about O3 and its inceptions, you can contact one of the founders of O3, 
Chris Wiggins at Chris at Oak Creek dot org. Our video series is for personal use and freely available, also under the MIT license, such that you can use anything from this video series for free as long as you credit it. Information in these videos, however, may be inaccurate. If O3 changes or updates, there may be some things which are featured in this video series that may not be accurate anymore. If there are major updates, we will try to update our videos in the future or make a new video series. So how to find help when you run into trouble? Well, first of all, solving programming problems on your own is easier than you might think. Python and also Opry tend to give error messages that can easily be found by uh, using a Google search. And often someone else already has encountered the same programming problem as you and this has been resolved. This helps us especially just Google the error and see what, uh, what is on the web. However, if you can't find the answer by searching online, there are some helpful resources which we want to share with you. For instance, on okri.readthedocs.io, there is a lot of documentation on the different okri features. Second, there is a Google support group where there are many active okri users, and also the founders of okri are really active there and also really helpful. In case you have more general programming questions, one site you may want to try is stackoverflow.com. The first step in getting your O3 setup ready is to download and install Python. And with Python, we refer to the Python programming language and to the Python interpreter. And you can download the Python interpreter from python.org. So if you go to python.org, you will see a website in which there are various options. And if you hover your mouse over downloads, you will see the most recent version there that you can download. As I use Win a Windows operating system, I can download Python for Windows there. And the most recent version is Python 3.9.6. In case you use OS or Linux, you can also download uh, their respective uh, Python version. And if you download it, the installation package will be uh, here. And in macOS, the uh, DMG, DMG file will be there. Before you click on Install Now, you you may want to check the, bu the uh, button uh, at Python 3.9 to 12. So you can install Python now. And once the setup is successful, uh, you can close this window. PyCharm is an integrated development environment. And this means that it is a textual editor in which you can program uh, Python. And to download and install PyCharm, you can go to jetbrains.com slash PyCharm slash download slash. So here you see that there is a community version which is available to anyone for free. However, in certain cases, for instance, if you're in science or if you're an educator, you can uh, download the professional version for free. You have to register for that. There's also a macOS version with a .dmg file and a Linux version. But one important thing is that you update the path variable, so you add the bin folder to the path. So you install it. So now PyCharm has been successfully installed. You can either choose to reboot your computer now, or to manually reboot at a later point in time. Now Python and PyCharm have been successfully installed. The final step is to install Opry. And if you use Windows, you can do this in your command prompt. If you use macOS, you can do this using your terminal. Also here, it's preferred to open this as an administrator. And the thing you need to type in your uh, command prompt or terminal to install O3 is pit free, install O3, all lowercase, and then uh, minus U. Uh, so let's open the command prompt. And type pit free, install O3. Minus U. So since O3 is successfully installed, this means that your setup is ready to program your first O3 experiment. And this is something Victor will show you in the next video. Thank you very much for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to like this video.
Thank you very much. <laughs>